Jesus said, Would to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and have negligent the waiter things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But this you should have done without negligent the others. Blind guides who strain out the knot and swallow the camel, would to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you cleanse the outside of the cup of and dish, but the inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel continues today telling us about that they thrive, those strong criticisms, but always made with love, even if the words were harsh. Today, criticism that the Lord addressed to the religious people of this time, at least some of them, they are also useful to us priests and, of course, lay people, because it could be the case that we are fooling. Of course, there might be a case in which it happens, fulfilling what the civil law and also what the church commands. Yet, we have not given our hearts to the Lord. Let us take an example. A marriage couple, the husband or the wife, either or. Let's suppose the husband, he does not be hurt, does not be hurt, does not go with another woman, does not get drunk, he turns the money he earns for the household. To take care of the family, he even collaborates in some of the things of the home from the outside. One could say that he is perfect husband. However, he does not love his wife and she knows it. He does not cheat on her with another woman, no. But he does not love her. The relationship is cold. The relationship is superficial. There is no love. He complies, but without love. Of course, there is a better than if he bit her or cheated on her. If he was a drunk heart, of course, but that is not the ideal. That is what Jesus says. We must fulfill this. And he says it clearly. Justice, mercy, and fidelity. But without forgetting that. The secret of the gospel is in the heart. Our religion is a religion of love. It is a religion of mercy. It is the religion of the heart. Which naturally has to fulfill with the concrete works. You cannot say to him following with the previous example. The husband cannot say to his wife, I love you very much, while he cheats on her and beats her. No, love must be demonstrated with works. But those works, when deep inside there is no love, are insufficient. Continuing with the same example, it is logical that the woman feels unsatisfied at least from the affected point of view. However, today I want to talk about St. Rose. I have a great affection for St. Rose, San Rosa de Lima, Peru, which was one of the countries most loved by my ancestors and together with Mexico. Peru immediately began to give saints, St. Rosa the first. But we must not forget St. Martin de Porres, a great saint. Saint Rosa was a mystic. Since a very young age, she gave herself to the Lord, and the Lord revealed to her so many treasures that kept in her heart and put in practice. Some of them she continued to communicate to us through the letters she wrote. For example, there is a famous letter to a doctor there in Peru, in Lima which is a marvelous text from the spiritual point of view. When she says in the letter, she says, quote, If everyone knew that after 
every suffering, after every pain comes a grace? If they knew that, they could have been willing to suffer, to be united to Christ, but also to receive the grace. End quote. Summarized in a phrase, I have read this, which is, which I like very much, and that it was has increased my devotion and my affection to St. Rosa. There is no thorn without a rose. It is usually said, there is no rose without a thorn, which is like saying, when something good comes to you, then something bad will come to you. Actually, it's the other way around. That is what this Peruvian mystic discovers. There is no rose without a thorn. There is no misfortune, suffering, illness, problem that does not bring a blessing afterwards. Of course, as long as we face this painful situation united to Christ, as she did, otherwise such suffering makes your life bitter. It turns you, you into a person with an unbearable character, obstinate, definitely an unhappy person, who does not make anyone happy. However, when that problem, whatever it is, causes you, causes you by someone else, caused by nobody, an illness, financial problems, when you bear, bear it with Christ, you unite with the Lord. You tell the Lord that you embraced it, because it is that problem that out of love for Him, you embrace that cross. Just as he embraced his cross out of love for us. When you do it, afterwards always comes a grace. There is no thorn without a rose. There is no problem with every fruit. Would that grace be for you? Possibly. It is already a grace for you because it helps you to carry the, that cross without becoming bitter. However, I almost always, it is a grace that you can offer for someone else, for example, for your children. You pray for your children. I think it is very good, but we offer our daily problems, those cows by living together, for example. We offer those problems for our children. There is no turn without our rose. There is no suffering without the positive result. Now, this we have to do it, or we have to achieve it, by uniting ourselves to Christ, when we suffer, let us ask St. Rosa of Lima, who was a great teacher of this positive vision of life. Let us ask her to help us to carry our problems, knowing that these problems will keep results, knowing that this hope. Let us set this in our hearts. There is a hope. There is no turn with our rose. There is no suffering that is not followed by a grace, as long as we face it with Christ. Amen.